Hey, how are we all today? No wig or anything today. Um, here we're, today we're going to talk about molecular or covalent bonding. Um, so you've already spoken about or learnt about ionic bonding. Um, and before we go any further, I just want to sort of recap on some of the things that, uh, some of the concepts around bonding. So um, when we're talking about bonding, we're talking about atoms and uh, elements coming together or joining together. So the first thing we want to do to recap is why do atoms join together in the first place? What brings them together? All right. And we need to remember that an atom's goal in life is to have a full outer or valency shell. So remembering that when we do our, our um, ball model, we're talking about that outer uh, ring that has um, electrons in it. They all want to have a full valency shell. All right. So they all strive to be a noble gas, essentially, which means, like I said, that they all have their, um, their outer valency shell filled up. All right. Now, once they do this, they can do their little happy dance and retire. That's their whole goal in life. The whole goal in life is to fill that uh, outer valency shell. Otherwise, they just go through life really, really sad. All right. So before we move on to molecular or covalent bonding, let's just have a look at um, ionic bonding, which we've already spoken about. So remembering some of the concepts around ionic bonding. So Ionic bonding happen between metals and non-metals, all right? So always between a metal and a non-metal. And when we, the reason they happen between metals and non-metals is because metals give away electrons and non-metals will take on electrons. That second part's really important for us to remember when we start thinking about covalent bonding. The fact that non-metals take electrons on. They don't give them away, they only ever accept them. All right, and metals give away electrons. All right, particularly in the ionic or um, in the ionic bond, um, they always give away electrons. What that does, it forms ions. All right, so positive and negative um, uh, atoms, and it's that that bond between the positive and negative that brings them together and makes them join. All right, so hence the reason ionic bonding because they are formed from ions. Um, when we start looking at molecular or covalent bonding, molecular or covalent bonding only happens between two nonmetals or three nonmetals or four nonmetals. All right, so molecular or co covalent bonding is between nonmetals. Now, remember what I said about nonmetals. Nonmetals only give away electrons. They don't take them, oh, sorry, nonmetals take electrons on, they don't give them away. All right, so how is this bond going to work? Well, they share electrons. All right, they share electrons. So if we if were to go back to that last video, last couple of videos about ionic bonding, um, some I've got a picture of a little periodic table here. Um, the two um, elements that are used to demonstrate that the most are sodium and chloride. All right, so if we look at, if we find sodium and chloride on this periodic table, sodium's here, it's in group one, and as you can, and you know, as it's been explained, everything on the left-hand side of this, bar hydrogen, hydrogen's a little bit different, are a metal, all right? Then we have this little staircase here of blue. These are our metalloids, all right? Our metalloids separate our metals from our non-metals, and our metalloids share characteristics of metals and non-metals. And then over here, anything beyond the red are non-metals. And as we can see, we've got chloride over here, or chlorine, I should say. It's only chlorine when it's on the periodic table. So I've got um, my sodium over here, my chlorine over here. All right, those two come together through an ionic bond. All right, so it's a, me a, a metal and a non-metal. So if we were to look at um, some... Um, covalent bonding, one that we might have a look at is between carbon and fluorine. So if we find carbon and fluorine on the periodic table, I've got carbon here, all right, and fluorine here. Now, what we notice about um, carbon and fluorine, they're both non-metals, which means if these two guys join together, this is going to be a covalent bond. Um, the other thing to remember is this is in group 14, all right, or if we look at our uh, group A, um, group A, it'd be four, 
um, which means that carbon has four valence electrons. All right, carbon is very special, so silicon, um, because they have four valence electrons. All right, um, if we look at fluorine, it's in group 17 or in group A, if we we're going to call it group A, group 7, which means it has seven outer, um, seven electrons in its valency shell. All right, now that's really, really important. Remember, what Adam's goal in life, all right, is to get a full valency shell. So for carbon to get a full valency shell, it needs to accept, all right, four electrons. For fluorine, it needs to accept one. All right, but we're talking about molecular or covalent bonding, and just remember, they don't, they don't take on electrons they're going to share. So let's look at how that's going to work. All right, so if we look at a carbon atom and a fluorine atom in our Bohr model, this is what they're going to look like. All right, so we've got fluorine, seven, its um, atomic number is nine, nine P plus, that's our nucleus. All right, we've got our two electrons in the first energy level and we've got our seven in the um in the second energy level and that energy level or that shell is what we call a valency shell because it is the outermost um, shell that this atom has um, electrons in so it's always their valency shell all right carbon all right carbon is 6p plus all right so it must have six electrons i've got my two in the first shell and then i've got four in my outer shell or my valency shell so how are these guys going to come together? How how are we going to make these atoms come together so they um, can share electrons and fill their goal of you know why do atoms join together? Because all right they want to be happy. They want to do their little happy dance. All right they want to become a noble gas. They want to fill their outer shell. How are they going to do that? Well, for these two guys to do that, we need more fluorine. So let's bring in some more fluorine. All right, so for these guys to do that, we need some more fluorine. So we've got four fluorine here. I'll just move it up. All right. Um, so how are they going to do that? So what's going to happen is, um, you know, they're non-metals. Non-metals don't give up electrons. So this guy here, he's not going to give up an electron to carbon or carbon's not going to give up an electron to um, fluorine. So how do they get around this? Well, they come together and they share. So this fluorine is just going to come along and sort of park itself here. All right. And when it does that, those two electrons are going to sort of entangle with each other between the two. All right. So it's going to look something like that. So now we've got these two electrons, all right, that are sort of linked. So this um, purple one will start going around the carbon and this green one will start coming around here. So you can see that now this one here, this fluorine has now got eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight in its valency shell. It's happy. It's going to do its happy dance. But we look at carbon. One, two, three, four, five. It's still sad. All right. It's still sad and lonely. So it's going to attract another fluorine atom. And that fluorine atom, the same thing is going to happen. We're going to share, share those two. So again, my fluorine atom here, all right? Again, my fluorine atom, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Happy days. You can go and retire, go to Queensland, get into some heat, all right? So we've got two of the fluorine atoms that are, you know, happy and um, ready to retire. Carbon still low. One, two, three, four, five, six. He's still sad. Still sad. So he's going to attract another fluorine atom. We're going to bring that in. All right. And again, they're going to share their electrons. All right. And again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Fluorine's happy. All right. Fluorine's happy. We've got four. Uh, it's got eight. Um, electrons in its valency shell. Carbon, however, still only got seven, still not happy. So he's going to attract another fluorine atom. 
Fluorine atom is going to join up. And then we have that here. So if we have a look at this now, fluorine, the, the top fluorine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Beautiful. It's happy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This fluorine is happy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This fluorine's happy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This fluorine's happy. But if we look at the carbon atom in the center now, again, it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. So the carbon atom still has its electrons spinning around um, its nucleus and all of the fluorine atoms still have its electrons spinning around the nucleus. All right. But they bond like this by um, having those pairs bond with each other, um, those pairs of uh, electrons. So this green electron is now going to come around this shell, but then it's going to come around the carbon shell. This purple one here is going to go around the carbon shell, but then it's still also going to come around the fluorine shell. So in essence, they're sharing the electrons, all right, to make sure that they have a full outer valency shell, all right, or a full valency shell. So it's really important. Why do atoms join together? because they want a full valency shell. They want to do their happy dance, they want to retire. Once they've done that, they've met their goal in life, they're done, all right? All they want to do is join their, um, is have a full valency shell. All right, so that's that there. Let's have a look at referencing that in a different way. So again, molecular or covalent, we're going to share electrons. So some Lewis dot diagrams. All right, so I've got some Lewis dot diagrams here of our of our four or our five atoms that we're using here. So Lewis dot diagrams are basically just the symbol of the um, atom. So carbon is C, fluorine is F. All right, with a representation of their um, how many valence electrons they have. So carbon four, fluorine one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. Now for fluorine, it's generally drawn like this one here. I've got two at the top, two here, two here, and one here. Um, but for these purposes, because I'm sort of showing how they come together again in the Lewis dot diagram, I've drawn them a little bit differently. So again, if I'm to sort of look at this, this fluorine atom here is going to come together with my um, carbon atom. This fluorine atom here is going to come together here. This fluorine atom here is going to go to here. And this fluorine atom is going to come to here. All right. And then what that would end up looking like is that there. All right. So again, I've got my green for my carbon. I've got my purple um, for my fluorine. All right. So again, these two are being shared between each of the atoms. All right. So that's a bit of a Lewis dot diagram. But how do we represent that? Um, when we've got to do a representation of this um, in, in a chemistry type way. Well, what we've got here is that. So here, we've got our carbon in the middle. We've got our four fluorines around the edge, right? And this is how we draw a Lewis dot diagram with a chemical bond, all right? These lines here represent the fact that there is a chemical bond all right, and it means that there's a single bond. One line means a single bond. All right, you can get two lines, you can get three lines. So for instance, oxygen, two oxygen um, atoms can come together to make a molecule. All right, when they to do that, they share two electrons because remember they've got six. So oxygen will have six valence electrons. So they share two electrons each, and that's what's called a double bond. Nitrogen. All right, nitrogen being seven on the periodic table. It can join together, um, so two nitrogen atoms join together, all right? And they do that with a triple bond because they share three electrons. Whereas in this one here, each of these is only sharing one electron. It's a single bond. All right, so just to um, go over a few things, why do atoms join together? Because they want a full valency shell. We've spoken about ionic, the fact that it's between a metal and a non-metal. Molecular or covalent bonds are always between non-metals. All right, they share electrons. Remember, non-metals will only ever take on electrons. They won't give them away, all right, because of their electronegativity, all right? So molecular and um, or covalent bonds are always between non-metals and they share electrons. 
To represent that, we've got our Lewis dot diagrams. All right, look forward to seeing you in the next video.